Let's talk about loneliness. Hey everyone, welcome back to today's podcast. We're gonna talk about loneliness. No, no, don't, don't make that face already. What was that intro? I was so random. No, because oh, that's how I do my podcast. Let's talk about homeless. That's hey how, everyone. That's how I do my podcast. That's what? my brand. I count with my fingers and then I start. Oh, okay. So you, when you said like, let's talk about loneliness, that's not part of the edit? No, yeah. it is. It shows up in the edit in my zoomed up face and then when I zoom out, you're gonna be here. Okay. It's like a surprise. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's a weird way to talk about loneliness. I'm gonna <laughs> hey, everyone. Let's talk about solitude and depression. And suicidal tendencies. <laughs> oh, my God damn. Okay. Loneliness, what you want to talk about? Yeah, I want you to explain, like, what does it mean to be lonely? What does it mean to be lonely? I mean, that's a tough one. I don't think I have, like, a really good tangible de- definition, if I was honest with you. And yet you lectured me on that stream. What do you mean? People are lonely. I think people feel a sense of um, solitude in the sense that they don't have really great human connections. I think that's true, yeah. Do you have good human connections? Yeah. What does that mean? That means that uh, should I have issues or should I have problems, I have people I can turn to, I have a good support system that's like kind of very present, easily accessible. Um, and that, yeah, I can kind of be myself with. So I wouldn't say I'm lonely in that sense. Do you feel, like, seen by your people? Mm, what do you mean? I think people need to feel fulfilled and not lonely. I think people need to see and be seen and love and be loved. And I think that we get that from all different kinds of people. Like, I know my mom sees me and loves me, but she can't see all parts of me. Right? She can't see my lovemaking side. She can't see my partner side. She can't. So I need someone else to fulfill those things. But generally speaking, she does see who I am and understands me. Sure. Right? So I feel less lonely with my mother, but not fully seen with her. So I'm still craving something else, hence having a partner, right? Okay, yeah. So when you think about life, like, that's how I think of loneliness. Is like, when I, so when I hear y'all tell me, like, people are lonely, all I'm hearing is people don't have mothers. <laughs> or people don't have partners. Or people don't have people who see them and understand them. It probably just means that they don't have an adequate amount of people who see them. I think having one person who sees you is rarely enough. In what capacity do you think that one person needs to see you for it to be enough? When is it enough? I don't think one person's ever enough. Never? No, never. I think at some point you need friends or you need children or you need something else. One person's a lot. It's it's a lot on their eyes, too. They only got to look at them. They're always the one to see them. It's a lot. That's true. Do you think that people are like a burden? It's me. Like having people... (laughs) Having... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're like throwing asteroids at me and I haven't finished clearing the first one. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I, okay. We're just talking about Do you think people are burdens? Like, God damn, what's this existential crisis? Have you not watched my channel? I, this is all the shit that I cover. I want to yeah, know. Apparently not, because I did not see all this coming. Okay, so go I want to know what it means to love or to be seen. What it means to carry the shoulder, the burden. You just said it's intense for one person to see. All of you. Is that You go through burden? no foreplay on this podcast. I'm, I'm so really sorry. Like, Should I have like, hold on. Abba, would you like to tell people who yeah, you, you are? Yeah, you, 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 you got to build up towards it. And then you also got to do like smooth transitions. Not just like you, you remove the penis. Then you flip her over. And you just <laughs> snake it back inside. You know, you Excuse me. Add a few kisses in between. You go through the process. Like, I feel like this is like the driest no Vaseline sex ever. Okay. First of all, a lot of interviewers do it this way. But I am a professional conversationalist. This is how you get people to answer them questions. Because if you just go in soft... Mm-mm. You have to shock the system. I highly disagree. I highly disagree. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me I, go soft. I, on I, you. I, I can certainly answer the question. I, I'm just taking it back because I feel like going in so abrasively is like super counterproductive. Man, if we ever went on a first date, you should have seen how that goes. So, what do your finances look like? Trans kids, what do you think about that? So, what's your opinion on the political system right now? Like, I'm very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. If you're always on 100, then it's yeah, just, yeah, it's always that's always too much. That's always too much. I think there's nothing wrong with being at 100. I just think always being at 100. It's like someone's like, ah, you want to go? You want to go? You want to go? You wanna go? Like, it's like high energy, like super high energy all the time. Like, no, I just want to chill. Bro. Have I not been chill for the last 24 hours? Yeah, you would be cool. Okay. Yeah. So, answer my questions though. <laughs> <laughs> this is jumping one spot to, okay, what's your question? What's uh, You said, are people burdens? Because you said having one person having to shoulder that, that okay. insinuates the burden is too much for one person to carry. Yeah. yeah. So, are people burdens? I don't think people are burdens. I think people can be burdens if they put all their emotional needs on one person. Am I being a burden to you right now by going 100? Mm. Yes. In what way? That you aren't being considerate of the fact that 
there are ways in which you may have conversations that may not be effective mm. and may counterproductive to the other person across from you. Now, for okay. me personally, I'm cool with it. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. See? Hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm just saying you could be abortion. To me, if I was to say in this moment, like, no, I'm fine with it. But I could definitely see that being a lot, yeah. Okay, so you, Abba, as a human, yes. are not burdened by me, Brittany. No, no, no. But somebody could be. Easily. Fuck them. I'm focused on you right now. So I want to know, how do you know that you're not... No, no, because I think if you call yourself a conversationalist, I got to I gotta, I gotta push back and I got to call you on that. No. Okay. You got to call yourself a conversationalist. You got to understand that, 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 that that's your title. That means you got to be adaptable. To and every you, single person, all 8 billion personalities on the planet? No, no. But I think what I'm asking for is not for you to be like super fringe with it i'm asking you to be adaptable in like very simple ways you know what i mean for sure but on whose behalf it's it's like it's like if you cooked me you know like food from fucking nepal and i'm like that's cool they use like very special spices but sometimes you need more general i gotta be dishes for everyone no but it'd be cool if you know how to make like spaghetti or a burger or pizza every now and then you know what i'm saying but who are you advocating for in this moment i'm advocating for a conversationalist being a conversationalist let's talk about loneliness Hey, Abba, how you doing today? Yeah, you could start there. That's a not bad place to start. I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I'm happy to be here with you. I am too. I didn't think any of this would go down this way. And so even this podcast before doing it, I didn't imagine anything. I was just like, I'll just feel it out as it goes. So yeah, see, we started off slow. We can go into like theoretical stuff about how we perceive this to go to begin with. That's true. And then slowly build from there. Man, if I ever interview someone who's really like famous and I do that to them, do you think it'd be overwhelming or do you think they... I don't think there's not necessarily a place where you can't start off at 100. I think Mm. that's actually perfectly acceptable under certain circumstances. It's like having sex. You don't always need foreplay. Sometimes you just fucking remove the paints and start fucking. That's true. But generally, you should do foreplay. Okay. You don't think conversations are similar? I think they can be. I think with you, I already went in in my head like I'm just going to go for it and ask him questions. If you were, to be honest with you, if you were um, a certain kind of like girl... I might have gone softer on you, but I think I assume that I've, like, I would can go aggressive. You thought I didn't like foreplay? A little. Yeah, no, I love foreplay. Okay, I'm sorry. We uh, can do foreplay. Yeah, yeah, I love foreplay. Uh, the thing is, and I think this is kind of true for most things in life, there should always be a gradual buildup because even though you want to get to the good stuff right away, it's like even when you're going to dinner, like, you can start right away with the steak. But generally, you get appetizer, you get the water, you get the little things that come before. Just to get you build up the appetite, the conversation that comes before. I feel like everything in life requires a bit of the before stuff till you get to the good stuff. I think yeah. that just makes it better, kind of builds up the whole process towards it, makes everyone more comfortable. If you just sat down, you like, I want to wield a stick, and it literally appeared in two seconds. I actually don't, I think that would make the restaurant experience worse. Yeah, I agree. The anticipation of everything makes it better. Um, the opportunity to kind of sit there, taking the decor, everything. Like, not everything's got to be, like, right to the point. Again, that's circumstantial. There are situations where it's better. But I think the same thing for dance. I think it's the same thing for, like, everything. So it's just, like, it's not even a conversationalist thing. I think it's just uh, um, what's efficient for processes in general. Friendships could be the same way. Mm. You don't start a friendship on 100, you know? You build up to 1,000, <laughs> right? You ever never seen girls, like, meet strangers? Like, I love your hair, besties! Yeah. Like, right away. Uh, that's just, I think that's just... Um, that's just like shallow ritualistic bullshit because mm. there's not real friendship there that's just them being like very overtly like high energy with somebody else that doesn't mean anything that's true because they would do that with the next person and like forget about the person you just did it with like that's not a friend <laughs> you know what i'm saying no for sure for right sure. right so so yeah yeah i think uh i think that stuff's good even though it might seem like small talk to people or like well, i don't just get to the really good part it's like mm, it's not as good if you don't go through that process generally speaking yeah. Do, you, do you feel that way, like, when you're even titling videos? Should I title this podcast, like, Foreplay with ABBA? Or is sure. that does that not build up the suspension? Should I build up even with the titles and the thumbnail? I think so. I think thumb, thumb, titles and thumbnails should tell you or give you an indication of what might happen, but still leave enough suspense for you to want to discover yourself. Mm. So they should be enticing, but they shouldn't be all revealing. Same thing with, like, a, a movie trailer. Movie trailer could literally just summarize a movie for you in two minutes. Nobody wants that shit. They you get know mad. that happens, though. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah, so I think if you dial it back, and then you realize, like, you want to show certain elements, but just build up slowly towards it. Yeah. So think about it, right? Um, if you know that loneliness is a topic, and you want to get to the meat of that, there are roundabout ways to get there 
mm-hmm. in a ways that's actually more efficient than asking directly. Okay, go ahead. Right. So let's say I was to sit across from you and I was asking, like, you know, would you say that you had a childhood filled with a lot of people who loved you or not? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know what the topic is, but we just talking about a child. Okay, interesting. And then you go ahead and go from there. Like, what's the loneliest point? You can you can build up towards that where it's in the way where the person doesn't even have to think about it. But when you talk with such an open ended question, where it's like, what is what is loneliness? It's like, damn, we get philosophical right away. We're going right to the nebulous of the galaxy. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I don't know. That's just my brain. Are you feeling uh, properly lubricate, lubricated now? Oh, I'm always good. You, you can't say you're always good and then ten, spend the first 10 minutes of my podcast lecturing me. I mean, I can. And <laughs> I, I mean, just did. Just did. <laughs> like, I just did. I just, I take interest in what's efficient. Yeah. I'm solution oriented. Yeah. So if I see something that seems off, I just have to say. Mm. So yeah. Okay. When you said you were a conversationalist, I'm like, uh, that was a proper protocol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> proper protocol according to who? Who makes up the rules? Um, I think we just have social conventions based off what we see works for most people. In what bubble? And just in the bubble of life. The reason why I know foreplay works in general is because I've done foreplay and I've not done foreplay and I've seen the difference and I've had the feedback and mm. I'm like, okay. Four plays generally good. Yeah. Okay. Is that like a rule someone wrote somewhere? No. But I think most of us, the viewers watching at home, we agree, right? Four plays good? Yeah? Yeah. All right then. So, um, yeah. That bubble. What's your relationship with your mother? <laughs> Are these transitions? <laughs> Are these questions? <laughs> have you ever been raped? I was like, oh, no, my the, Okay, wow. I wasn't even going to go there, but if we're going to, have you? Okay. No, we're not even going to go. <laughs> um, I have a great relationship with my mom. Me and my mom yeah. were really cool. Yeah, on great terms. Pretty much consider her like a friend. She chat all the time. Do you feel um, like seen by your mom? No. Does she know about your like YouTube life very much? Mm, to some degree. Like I think internet life in general is kind of like hard to understand for her. But she knows I do well for myself and she's popular and shit. Um, has she ever, like, my parents always do this thing where they're like, I'm really proud you're making money. And I'm like, thank you. And they're like, but I really don't like what you're doing on the internet. Yeah. I don't think it's really crossed my mom's mind that much because I think she's just happy about the money. But, um, yeah, for her, she doesn't really get it. So I think if she understood it more, maybe she would feel some type of way. But for the most part, she's just like, he pays the bills, so I'm not complaining. So I'm like, I think that's a good deal. Do you guys ever have, like, controversies in relation to, like, ethics? Like, do you ever disagree with your mother's, like, lifestyle, or does she disagree with yours? Mm, no. No, generally speaking, we kind of don't have that issue because my mom knows my boundaries, and so she's, you know, it's like, it's not her place. Hmm. And I mean, I'll tell her how to live her life. I might make a suggestion here and then every now and then, but beyond that, I'm like, mom wants to live that way. This is how she should live, and then in the same way. She used to try to do that with me when I was younger, and then I was just like, no, I'm not interested. You moved out pretty young, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 17. 17? Mm-hmm. Why? I said I want to be on my mom's house. Her house, her rules. Ugh, so if, I wanted my, if I wanted to have my own rules, I got to pay my own rent. So mm-hmm. I just paid my own rent, and I was like, mom. Wow. So, so that's what I mean. Like, what was that rule? I didn't want to follow my mom's rules. Where was the discrepancy? <sighs> it's just it's her space. So at the end of the day, if she wants things cleaned at a certain time, handled a certain way. Um, or have a say in my life, she had to pay my bills. Mm. And it's the same in anything. It could be like education, lifestyle, whatever it is. And I was like, no. So I think for me, like, um, that's the say. She wanted like a say in everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is your mom religious? Yeah. Yeah? Do you, what is it? Islam? Yeah. I think. Okay, right. Muslims. And then you <clears throat> are not, though. You're just a secularist? Yeah, yeah. I'm not religious at all. Why, why not? I'm just not interested, not curious. Were you raised in the mosque? I wasn't raised in a mosque. I was raised in my mom's house. But I mean, um, you know. She didn't make you go? I mean, well, we went a few times, but I just wasn't interested in going. Really? I didn't have an option. It was like, you go to church. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, for my mom, I think it's something she wanted us to do a lot as she tried to push us towards. But I mean, I was just like, nah. Why does it, I feel like you're, you're explaining, like, your mom's an immigrant, isn't she? Yeah. What the hell? You have an immigrant mom who's religious, who is just like. Well, I mean, at some point, she can't make you do a bunch of stuff. Like, she can take you to soccer practice if you don't go kick the ball. Like, 
it's, it's pointless. Okay, you're explaining it to somebody who literally, like, if you didn't go to church every Sunday, and my parents are immigrants from Iraq, like, you go to church. There is no option to not go to, I was the first child in my family to stop going to church at 18, because yeah. that's when I was allowed. Yeah. It was a huge controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just sitting here explaining the most chill immigrant mom I've ever heard of. Yeah, I don't think going to church is like the same as going to the mosque. Like most families don't go to the mosque every week. Really? Yeah, I don't know anything about Islam. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not like church. So that's just not a thing that you do on Fridays. Like it's on occasion normally for like Ramadan. But then for like the older men at the very least, like they go a little bit more regularly for like kids not coming. You see kids going mm. every single week to the mm-hmm. mosque. That just doesn't happen. That's interesting. Um, and so maybe that's part of the reason. But outside of that, it's like... Yeah, there's no there's no ritual like that. There's like Ramadan every year where you do like the fasting, and so that one should really heavily encourage us. And we would do it generally every year. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, it's like, you know. Are there different rules? Like when you're kids, do you have to like fast as much as the adults? I don't think kids have to, mm. but until you feel comfortable, and then once you feel like you're ready, you start doing it. Hmm. Um, so I think up until a certain age, you're not expecting it, and after a while, it's like, all right, you can start now. Okay, that so, makes sense. Yeah. How interesting. Do you have um, siblings? Yep, seven. Seven siblings. Wait, why did I... I legit thought you come, came from a small family. No, it's a big family. Oh my God, where are they all? All over. We just live everywhere. Oh, how wonderful. Are you close to them? Some of them. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, that makes me so happy for you. Wait, this is a perfect... Okay. Is this a good transition time to talk about like loneliness and siblings? Like, I want to know if having siblings has helped... Helped what? Like, avoid loneliness. Um... No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, it depends... At least for me, I wouldn't say so. I think I needed fulfilling friendships and then um, other things. Siblings are cool, but I don't think for me it ever filled that gap. Really? Yeah. God, I'm so codependent. I'm interdependent on my siblings. Yeah. The healthy one. I literally have three brothers living with me right now. Yeah. And I love it. It's so fun to like open up the door. Or my little brother comes in my room. He's like, hey, you want to watch Finland? Hey, you want to watch Berserk? And I was like, yeah. And like, it's so nice. So did you not have that growing up at all? No, no. Why? I mean, I'll probably ask you why you had what you had. I think what you have is more peculiar than what I have. You said to me on the podcast, no, not on the podcast, on the stream with Steven, you said, um, like, I think you said it, right? If this was a video game, people would have chosen, like, my family or whatever or my life. Did you say that or Steven said that? Steven said that. Steven said that? I didn't say that. Okay, I'm just making sure I thought it was you. Yeah, okay. I don't remember what I said. Oh, it was me. <laughs> well, what is that? What do you think that means? Because, like, my family, we struggle. We went through fights. But we also, like, we rely on each other. It's very, like, you have no one but family. No, it's like, you know when they have, like, movies and TV shows about, like, family bonds and everyone's, like, fighting, but they figure it out and they work like together. Like, Fast and like, the Furious? Like, that looks more like what you have yeah. than, than what the average person has. I'm pretty sure most of your viewers watching would, don't have what you have. But do you think it's, like, an immigrant thing or something? Because my whole life, my parents said friends are people who come and go. Blood stays. They're very blood is thicker people yeah. versus, like, you know what I mean? So they're very, like, family is going to be the thing that stays with you. Could be. Could be that. I don't know if it's an immigrant angle um, it could be that though. Uh, I just suspect like certain families just have that in them, and then others don't. Even certain families like don't fight or anything, or don't have any issues. They don't necessarily have that kind of close proximity where everyone's tight. You also live with your brothers. Like, how many people watching uh, anywhere near our age can say that they're living with any of their siblings or near them? Yeah, I guess not very many. And like, it's kind of interesting because I have nine siblings, and we all kind of live wherever. But like, my home is like an open door policy. So if any of my siblings ever want to come stay with me like just come over right it's kind of the rule but i think a lot of other people even with their own family want people to call ahead they don't necessarily want people just to show up yeah so i think that see that is like so fascinating to my brain yeah but you would be the exception in this discussion do you think see for me my brain automatically goes and that's why people are lonely i mean it could be one of many reasons you're also like one of nine not too many people have that many siblings, if any. And I'm the third oldest, so I'm like the mom. So everyone comes to me, and everyone's always centered around Brittany's yeah, life. Yeah, a lot of people <sighs> don't have any siblings. So I mean, if that's why they're lonely, no, I don't think it's necessarily why. It could be a contributing factor, but yeah. See, okay, so I have, it's funny, all, like, I have this inner circle, and that's my family, and then I have, like, four non-related people that are, like, my homies, like, bright or dice. And all of them are only children. And it's fascinating to me. Like, and I think one of the reasons they're attracted to me as a friend is because I have like this, they say I have this, like, they really know I want them in my life. Mm -hmm. But I think I make that an effort because my family and I have gone through so many like 
there were times like five years I didn't talk to my family. Like I was so sure. I was like, I don't even care if my parents die. I was so in my mental illness. I was so feeling rejected for being queer that I was like, fuck them. I don't need them. But obviously the thing I needed the most was my family. Like I was, I was begging for them to just accept me. And even though they struggle with my ethics and my decisions, they now, because we've worked so hard, we have this closeness. We didn't always have it. Sure. So like one of the rules I had when I came back into the family was to like interview my siblings and then negotiate with them. Like what kind of friendship do you want? Mm-hmm. How close do you want to be to me? What's what's the expectation I should have as a sister? Do you think that's abnormal? That conversation? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that it's like abnormal to a point where you're like, that's stupid? Or, ooh, that's a tool people should be utilizing? I think it could be a tool that people should be using. I don't think it's dumb. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing, no. Hmm. I think it's just abnormal. As in, like, not common. You know how, okay, so I'm on the stream with you and Steven, sure, right? Yeah. And listening to you guys talk, uh-huh. and instead of thinking I'm the exception, what if you thought, oh, hold up. Oh, hold up. The camera likes to... Turn off after some of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> At least the audio is still going. Yeah. Okay, so like I'm on the stream with you and Steven, mm-hmm. and like you guys are telling me I'm the exception, I'm amazing, I'm better than 8 billion people on the planet, thank you. Sure. But like why? Why not utilize the tools I have, or why not say, ooh, Brittany has an answer society needs. Why default to like, Brittany's the exception, so... Mm. So I think circumstantially you live an existence is different. So you live with your siblings. Like most people are not gonna have that experience. I mean, even living in the same city as your siblings is like very unlikely. Yeah, but I only live with three of them. The other seven I mean, that's are everywhere. Three more than most people. Yeah, I guess so. How many live in my city? Zero. You know what I mean? So like, the reality is most people move away for work, or they move away for relationships, or they move away for whatever reason because they want to reinvent themselves and get away from home at some point. It's like. Yeah, you, certain luxuries that you have or certain things that make your situation kind of exceptional and very unique. You also live in a small area, you know what I mean, with a tight-knit community. Like, you're going to have a different experience. That's true. Um, when you talk about, like, your solutions to, like, loneliness to some degree, some of it's just not tenable for most people. I do agree with you that it is, like, a luxury having them near me. And eventually they'll have to move on and get married. And they're probably not going to live where I live, right? But, like, my friends, my grown-up friends, we don't live in the same state either. It's, like, a privilege. So when, when I hear people talk about loneliness, I guess I get a little frustrated because it takes such a great effort to find true connection, like dating. I think that's how special friends are, like real friends. Like there's friends you know and homies, we're YouTubers, we have a lot of friends. Or like people we know, right? People we know. Sure. And people might say, oh, those are friends. But like sure. close-knit, people I can confide in, people I can tell my like feelings to, that's a, that I feel like is just as rare as finding somebody who wants to spend their life with you. Okay. So when you guys talk about the loneliness issue and you guys are pointing fingers at like sex workers or video games or Netflix, it frustrates me, I think, a little bit because the, the like even finding friends that matter, one or two, you're lucky, right? And that's good. I don't know why you need more. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not liking the way that conversations are being talked about around loneliness, like blaming the copes. Like people do OnlyFans to cope, maybe, right? Mm-hmm. But like... Why not? Why not what? Why not cope? If you don't have like strong connections because you know it's rare. Because it doesn't lead to good outcomes. I don't think it leads people to being happier content. So, yeah. People are reporting that they're lonely and they have these copes and their displays with their lonely feelings. Then it's like, doesn't help. Yeah, but if they didn't have the cope, they'd still just be as lonely. So what does the cope matter? Mm, I don't think that's true. No. No, I don't think that's true. I think if a lot of the circumstances that create a more lonely society weren't there, I think people's quality of life would improve. Yeah. Okay, so like in Iraq, where my parents are, they, <laughs> they had a house in the courtyard. Mm-hmm. And it was three homes like this. And then in the middle, all the family would eat together and meet together, right? Mm-hmm. And then when they immigrated here, they stayed together. And then as the kids got older, we all kind of separated and went our ways. And like cliques stood together, right? Stayed together. That like takes effort. Like it... I don't like hearing people complain about things that take effort and then they don't make the effort. What takes effort? Relationships, friendships, bonding with okay, people. You sure. have to show up. You have to show up to the get-togethers. You have to bring a pie. You have to like participate in the family sure. or in your friend circles. So when people say like people are lonely and oh, OnlyFans isn't helping, well, fuck you for ever thinking. You deserved without earning the right to have these relationships just that they would show up at your door. Sure. Don't just say sure. Give me I know, I, know, I, know, I agree. I'm just asking where the question is. Like, so I the, guess the question is why then would you? Well, then why were you so disagreeable with me on the stream? Because I don't think it changes my answer at all. 
I don't disagree that people have to put in effort. No, that's not the point. I just think that society can engineer itself to give people the best opportunity for good outcomes. Society can't force you to have babies or connect with your family. No, but it can't make things a lot more accessible. So for example- We have the internet, how much more accessible For exa For example, the babies is a perfect example. Yes, society can't force you to have babies or push you to have babies or whatever, but it can engineer itself to make it much easier for you to have a ch child. So that if you do want to have a child, it's affordable. Yes. It's possible. Yes. And so you're not worried about finances and feeling like you're priced out of that possibility. That's yeah. ways in which society can create like tax credits or programs in place so that if you do want to have a child, a lot of the stuff like daycare, it's not going to cost you three grand a month mm. so you can't afford it. So yeah, I agree with you that there's a lot of personal accountability in a lot of these situations, but there's undoubtedly things that society can do to engineer itself to make it more efficient for people. So I just think about what's the best outcomes. And that's why I think about where society can fix itself to make things better for people. Okay, I do agree with that. Because my parents the other day were like, when are you having a baby? And I'm like, when I can afford one? Okay. Do I own a house? Yeah. Like, am I stable? Like, I, I want to have a baby right now. But you're right. This economy, like, I cannot support a child and myself, like, right now. It's not going to happen. So mm. give me a few years, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but even though that is the case, I still have access because I feel like I've worked so hard to maintain good friendships that I don't feel like I could say I, like, am lonely because I've worked so hard not to be. But I feel like that has to do with being seen. So even if people aren't having babies, they're still human entities who are feeling lonely you know what I mean? Like you can still feel not lonely when you don't have a baby, when you don't have a house, when you don't have friends to some extent, yeah. you know? So I guess I want to come up with a societal solution that you, doesn't... You have friends that are out of state. Mm -hmm. You guys talk a lot? Yeah. You find those friendships rewarded? Totally. Most people would not find those kind of friendships rewarded. Why? Because you're not around them. Like I'm not, sorry, I'm, I'm not going to just talk to somebody on the phone once a month or twice a month or whatever the fuck it is and feel like, oh, this is a great friend. It's not... I'd probably just prefer not talk to them. Why? Because not everyone's built like you where like a phone conversation feels great. Like it doesn't for me. I, do, I really don't care about those. Someone wants to call me to talk about life. I'm like, I'm zero interested. So how do you bond with your friends? Going out to do stuff with them. Seeing them an actual person. Spending time with them in a location. So you buy a plane ticket every time you want to see a friend? Oh, no, my friends live in my city. Wow, Mr. Privilege. What you mean? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you're in a situation where your friends live in your city, but like my friends don't live in my state. Yeah, but I also have to be honest about how I met my friends and how I've kept them. Oh, okay. So what if you moved? Like, would that ruin those friendships? Like, let's say you moved to a totally different place. I probably would lose a lot of the benefits of those friendships because we would be in different areas. So we would stop keeping in touch nearly as much or be as involved in each other's lives. So they're not right or dies. They're just friends that are close to you. Well, their friendship's conditioned on the fact that, yeah, they're in the same area as me. Sure. So, okay. Okay. So, Spectrum of Friendship, actually inspired by your video with Preach years ago about how you guys, like, aren't friends or whatever. Inner circle. Inner outer circle. Everybody else in the world, right? Who are your inner circle? Who those, are those people? Those people are my inner circle. You have an inner circle that you don't mind just, like, moving out of state and all of a sudden the friendship's done? Yeah. If I would see them again, I'd be very happy to see them again. But I would be honest about the fact that that friendship would diminish in terms of like its impact in my life because I'm not around them. What's complicated about that? I think that's the problem is like maybe I don't understand what's happening in the world because to me like ride or dies are people I want to grow old with. I want to grow old with my friends the same way I'm going to grow old with my husband. Yeah, I think that whole talk about growing old with these people is like a bit of cope because um, if you're not around them on a semi-regular basis, at least for me, I know that's true, then it's just like, they're living and you're living and you guys are apart. Now you draw a tremendous amount of value and interest and stuff from like phone conversations, which is great. That's how you're built. A lot of people are not built like that. But do you think those people who aren't built like that are lonely? Uh, if they don't have friends in the area, sure. I mean, the reason why people traditionally stay in an area or in the same place, like the reason why I continue to live in the city I live in is because I get to be close to the people I care about. If I couldn't be close to the people I care about, yeah, it would severely hamper the relationship. I think I'm, I have less, I think I'm having less sympathy with this whole, like, I think I just don't believe people when they say they're lonely, if that's also the answer of I have to live near my friends. It feels too, like, lug, it feels like a luxury, like, to live. It feels like a luxury. That's literally how humans have always lived. Uh, yes. Okay. It's true. We, humans usually evolved to stay in the 200 mile radius of where they grew up. Okay. So 200 miles and I moved, I moved everywhere. Like, I absolutely did not stay in the place I grew up. Um... 
but I think I had to move for my own mental health because like, okay, I live in the country, I live in the woods. My mental health needs the country, but I also need my friends and family. So yes, I do Zoom calls. I have like weekly checkups on Sundays. I call my friends and catch up with everybody. Hey, how's it going? How's your week been? Mm-hmm. I do my check-ins. Yep. I send letters. I send all presents, whatever we have to do, right? I send people's mom's flowers just so they know I'm thinking about them. I'm not going to lie. That sounds like so much labor. <laughs> it's You know what? I'm even lazy about it. I'm not even one of those people that's, who do like birthday gifts labor. and stuff. That's way too much labor. No, but see, that's okay. That's just maybe my also expression of love language is let them know. I'm thinking about them. I saw this thing. I thought about you. Um, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, how can you, how can the world say I'm lonely mm-hmm. and then not make any fucking effort except, oh, well, I want everyone to come to me in my small town. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes you have to move. Sometimes you have to go meet people. I grew up really in a conservative bubble. I needed to go to a leftist bubble to go meet gay people, right? Like, you have to move sometimes to find people who see you and then still make Not an everyone effort. has the luxury to just move up their whole life to go do that. You're talking about poor immigrants who came from Iraq with 17 kids, bitch. I don't want to hear If it. I got jobs, if I got responsibilities, I can't just go move somewhere else to go make friends. But exactly. So I'm saying life is circumstantial and not everybody has the luxury of having everything perfect. So where mm. does loneliness, like, how do you have a relationship with that idea of loneliness without first acknowledging the life circumstance? Hey, this is just how life goes. If you want it different, you have to pick different. Again, it comes down to the point where it's like, this is not how life goes. This is a part of it socially engineered. Absolutely. You mean because of the government and the state and the country and the ethics of like where you are? And the internet and everything. Mm. Yeah. So where you can derive a tremendous amount of value from online and internet relationships, a lot of other people can't. I know I don't look at internet relationships and think like, wow, these are so valuable. You do. That's okay. You look at a Zoom call and you find that valuable and that's fantastic. I don't. I love seeing my niece. I I could maybe last two minutes on a video call with her. Mm. It's not the same as being around her. That's true. When I'm in person with my niece, we having a ball. Yeah. If I was halfway across the country, not the same. Not the same. It's just not the same. And I get to watch her evolve in front of me. That's valuable. Seeing in videos, not the same. Do you live near her? Oh, yeah, she lives like five minutes away from me. She's at my place like three days a week. Like I'm, I'm super close to her. Okay. But that's due to being actually there with her. Mm-hmm. Now, is that conditional or is that less like, not, maybe, maybe. But what do you want me to tell you? Like, I don't look at a photo and get excited. Okay. Which sounds kind of crazy with regards to these. But you get what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it just doesn't have any kind of emotional connection for me for than just being there. Yeah. That Being there is just different. So to me, it's not a substitute. I think you need to be close to the people that you love, which is why so many people make such a concerted effort later on in life to be close to those people. Why, why people want to be close to their parents. They could just get a phone call in. They could get a caretaker, but they generally move them in closer. They yeah. want to be around them because they understand, like, that's not the same. Yeah. And it's not the same for them either. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that my friendships at the moment are very strong because of the fact that we're in the same area. It's also a conscious choice to do so. I could have moved. It was like, you know, but I choose not to because I want to be close to them. Okay, what do you think about this? So my, I call him my farm brother. I give all my siblings nicknames because I don't, you know, share their names. And... My farm brother has like the four kids in our family. He had four kids, one on the, the fourth one's on the way. And they just moved to the, a different country, a different, sorry, a different state, but in the country. And it's really conservative. And he was like, hey, are you going to follow my family? And I was like, that was the plan, but you move somewhere even more conservative than where I live now. And I can't, I can't move somewhere more conservative. Like I, I know I'm not like a crazy SJW anymore, but I'm pretty fucking progressive. Okay. So I made the decision for my own mental health and well-being long-term to live pretty far from them, about 14 hours. But I also, you know, hopefully will be married and have a kid in the next few years, who knows? And then like that will allow me to like ship the kids back and forth and that will make the connection stronger, but also out of respect- Wait, ship the kids back and forth? You know, like send them to his house and he can send the kids to my house, like our kids, you know, like as cousins. That's what I do. Okay, let me ask you. If you move to um, Serbia, let's say it's Serbia. Okay. I don't know why. All right. And that's where you have your family. Do you think your kids are going to be that close to their siblings as if you were living 14 hours or you're living one hour away? No, but we'd make the effort. Do you think they would be as close? Probably not. Why? Because they didn't grow up together. They didn't share enough memories. So there you understand it. These are the ways in folks... Society can engineer itself to make things harder for people, but I don't think these things are substitute. And at the end of the day, they're probably going to be closer to their friends in their area or the people that they grew up with than the siblings that they have halfway across the world. All these online stuff is cute, 
This is not real for people. And so when everyone's terminally online nowadays, mm -hmm. they don't have social hobbies, they don't have social activities, it's very difficult for them to make friends. I'm different because I have social activities that I can see people in person with, right? It's very easy to make friends when you have very sociable activities. It's very easy to date when you have social activities that put you in front of the opposite sex. People don't have that anymore. So that's another way in which society engineers itself to separate people. Do you think it's like on purpose? I don't think it's on purpose. I, I, I just think that the way that we've set things up, we just, we made it much easier. Like now you're working from home. You don't see your office. Okay, well, guess what? Like I think it's like 30 to 40% of relationships started at the office, right? True. So you're just doing all these things where it makes it harder for people to date, for people to, so the loneliness is obviously going to come afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you're self-aware. You're saying the thing that's like a duh. And at the same time, people will hear you and they'll be like, so I should just give up. Some people might think that. And, you know. Well, fuck them, people. That's what I'm saying. How can I have sympathy for you if you're not going to make a fucking effort? I mean, that's easy. You don't have to have sympathy. I really don't care about having sympathy for them. I don't think that's the point. Um, I just think about good outcomes. Society's worse when people are feeling way more lonely. And so I want to fix it to make people less lonely. That's it. Okay. It's not about, like, I feel bad for them or, like, I do. Personally, you don't have to. We don't have to agree. What's the best outcome? That's all that really matters. It's funny, my farm brother, he doesn't give his kids tablets or electronics. And then if they want to watch a cartoon or something, he pulls out the laptop and they watch it as a family type thing, right? Sure. So a bunch of people were like, oh, don't you, aren't you afraid your kids are going to fall behind? He's like, no, my, my kids are actually know how to talk to people. They're going to have friends in real life. They're going to do things. And they go to jujitsu. They're like three, five, and six. They're like little kids. Yeah. And he takes them and he socializes them. He actually just moved from my state to their state because there was no kids in his neighborhood. It was uh, a town of 500 people. Okay. He's my neighbor. And so I was just cracking up at that idea of like, he made the effort to move his family 14 hours away from his original home mm -hmm. just to give his kids a social group. Absolutely. They need that. Yeah. So I'm saying like, but then people criticize him for not giving them the modern life of like, even though two-year-olds are having addiction problems right now with screens. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like all these studies are coming out saying, don't give your kids phones. And then my brother's being ridiculed by the modern parents. Like you don't let your kids are going to fall behind in school. Kids are going to think they're lame. Fuck them. Like your kids are not even going to want to socialize. Okay. So, right. So like, that's a societal problem. Here's the solution. Pretend it's the 90s, bro. I didn't get a cell phone till I could pay for it. I didn't get a car till I could pay for it. That was the rule in my house. Yeah, but you're... you're... Okay, so, but you can't pretend like it's the 90s when you live around 100,000 people. Why not? Because you're, you're, you're not raising your kids, society is. Like, you could do that if you live in the woods, because it's just you, the woods, and that. When you're in a much larger area, your kids go outside and play, they go to school with other kids, they're, not, they're being socialized. Like, they say this even in children development studies. Not studies, but like, just like, if you ever go to take those university classes, like, they say, like, you know, you raise your kid to like about five or six, and after that, like school raises them. I was homeschooled till I was 15, and my brother's homeschooling his kids. But I, I'm not gonna homeschool mine. I don't have the energy. Hey, listen, there's different thoughts at all. If you're telling your viewers everyone gotta homeschool their kids, no, that's not fuck gonna happen. That. Like, people no, got I'm jobs. Not, I'm not even gonna homeschool my kids. I got a job. Like, like, like I don't two, homeschool my kids. Two parents gotta work. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, maybe that is the problem, though. So maybe we can say society has made it so expensive where two parents have to work, and so the mom or dad isn't home, yeah. and so the kids aren't being socialized. Like, my mom, even though we were homeschooled, we were part of, like, a co-op, I guess, and so I was with other kids who were homeschooled. I was socializing every week, three times a week. I had my siblings plus them, plus the neighborhood friends. You know, my parents were very much, like, go outside, and then my mom would whistle to get us all back inside when we are you know, yeah. hanging out blocks away. So maybe it's a part of that. Like, I want to do that. When I have a baby, I want that baby to know, like, you have so many options in the world. You do not have to even choose the one I chose, right? But I have to give them those tools. And so part of me is, like, wondering if people aren't giving their kids the tools. But is that a society issue or the parent's issue? Probably both. Okay. Yeah. So That's circumstance okay. might force a parent to make a decision that isn't the best for the child because it's, they're not even living their best life as the parent. Yeah. Because, I mean, they don't have the options to. I don't think every parent has the option to give their child every option. How about this? I got a homie who grew up with really supportive parents. They could do whatever they wanted growing up, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And recently, they found that they felt like, because their parents were kind of like white and hands off. Like, not very like, who are you dating? What's going on? Like, they were very much like, hi, what do you want to tell me? Yeah. Versus my mom's like, who are you with last night? And I'm like, you know what I mean? Even now, I'm just like, where are you? And I was like, mm. you know, sh now they're in therapy and they're doing their whole thing. And they're like, my parents didn't love me. And I was like, your parents didn't love you? And they're like, I was like, you got everything paid for in life. Every single thing like was taken care of. You're, you could get a house right now if you wanted. Ask your parents for a house. I'll give it to you right now. And they were like, that's not what I want. I want my parents to care about what I'm doing in my life. I was like, so tell them. And they were like, well, I can't just tell them. I'm like, oh my God. Like I'm looking at these people and they feel really lonely. 
But then they say no to every date. They don't socialize outside of work. They're not interested in online communities. So like, at what point are we just like self-deceptive about our own contribution to our existence? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not going to speak to outlier cases of somebody who's like refusing every date possible. Hold up. She's an outlier. I'm an outlier. Everybody is an outlier. No, but you two are. I oh, mean, for the your, your example of your friend is somebody. Oh, hold up. <laughs> <You're good? laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah, I mean, your example of a home person who's like getting apps on dates all the time, doesn't want to do any activities, but refuses every date possible and then doesn't talk to her. Addicted to work. I mean, yeah. Worst place to date, though. Very yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we get caught up too much in the weeds and like individual examples. I, I I would say this: Are there some people who are really working against their own self interest when it comes to this loneliness issue? Absolutely. I still doesn't think it changed the fact that like with how addictive social media is, how addictive a lot of these online platforms are, how addictive, um, sorry, not how addictive, but how we've engineered things to make it so that people have the least amount of ways to have contact based off like work and staying at home to work and then. Um, a lot of you know social activities just not being as accessible or as common for people. I just think at the end of the day, society just doesn't give the best outcomes in terms of people feeling connected to other people. So that's where I stand on it. Um, individuals, can they take up some ownership in regards to their own situations? Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of people, if you want to take a class or do stuff like that, will probably help you out. Um, but it doesn't change my stance that um, there's a lot of things that are contributing to people to cope with their loneliness rather than actually address it. And uh, these copes aren't just, you know, like, oh, there's a TV show on Friday. Like, they're very addictive in nature. So, yeah. It's interesting. After I was on that stream with you guys, a bunch of the men were upset with me. They're like, Brittany's so heartless. She doesn't even care about men and men's loneliness. And I was just like, and then even Kyla came on to be like, Brittany, it's a real issue. Like, 51% of people are saying they're lonely. And I'm like, what, what does this mean to say I'm lonely? And then I give solutions and then people are like, nah, that's not it. And I'm like, the fuck? Well, what are your solutions? Because so far, like, you've pointed to examples in your life. But again, I think your life is just not tenable. Well, that's the problem. I don't, I guess I don't see myself as that abnormal. But then I guess I must be. I, I don't know. The only Hold difference on. is, yeah. How do you not see yourself as abnormal when you've conceded, and even in this conversation, multiple times that your circumstances are not what you expect normal people to have? Well, because I'm, I feel like I made them that way. Like I. But that's not the point. Is, what are your, what are your circumstances? Two parents at home siblings who fought and got over it middle class family right you live in a small small what now i grew up in orange county california i grew up in disneyland i okay. grew up in the city uh, uh, okay okay but i'm just talking about your circumstances now but now i'm old i'm in my 30s like my but that's what we're talking about. we're just talking about now because i can't talk to you in the past I don't but know like what... the past i feel like my childhood is the reason my adulthood is so good but my childhood wasn't easy either. I was, I've been trying to kill myself since I was eight years old. My parents used to tell me like gay people are pedophiles. Talk about fucking complexes in my brain. I have borderline, I have PTSD, I've been raped. So like I've gone through, I've been like no dollars in my account. I've been like no food in my like fridge, right? I'm not saying your life was easy. That's no, not... but I'm, okay. Well, go ahead, Noah. Well, I'm saying like, it doesn't matter your circumstance. You can say my parents are immigrants. They came from a war torn country where my like siblings were, or not my siblings, my aunties and uncles were tortured by Saddam, right? Then they came to America. You can give any circumstance. You can, but people have to have a realistic relationship with reality and ask themselves, like, we're in a privileged fucking country. If Americans are lonely, like, come on. How are you lonely with all this fucking, like, access? Yeah, and I, and I explained it to you, like, in multiple ways. So I don't, I don't understand which part of it is like tough for you to understand what I say. Like, what do you not understand about the fact that technology? It seems passive. Your explanation feels passive to me. Well, society. Well, society fucks society. That's why we protest. That's why we have politicians. That's why we try to be activists. That's why we make a difference. Yeah, I mean, you can say that, but you still pay your taxes. Yes. I... Why? Because society says so. Because they'll throw me in prison. <laughs> okay, you still got social media. <laughs> yeah. Like most people. How many people complain about having social media every single day, but they still stay on? They have to be tethered. So it's like an addiction issue. But absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm pretty confident. Even if you didn't have, if it wasn't your work. I'm pretty sure you'd still keep a few. No, fuck that shit. Yeah, you say that. Everyone talks that big talk. Everyone talks that big talk. But none most of my people, are on social they, media. they keep YouTube. They nah, keep something. Nah, yeah, nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. No, all my inner circle, none of them are on social media. None of them have Instagram or Twitter or none of that because none of them need it. I'm the only loser in my family who needs it because it's my job. 
Like I said, most people say all this stuff, but they do keep it. Most people do it. So fine. Then again, it's everyone highly in my circle addictive. is exceptional. It's hot. It's hot. Do you think my whole fa- my whole circles? Okay, fine. We might have Instagram to send DBZ memes. But like, is that what it is? Am I just like around so many exceptional people? I think you know you, you live in a rural area. Hold up, your friends who live in the city, mm-hmm. none of them have social media, Mm-mm. so they all just live in the major city. Then yeah, they're the exception by yeah. definition because most people living in a major city keep it social media. Hmm. Yeah, most people complain about social media, but they keep it all the time for whatever various reasons. And at the end of the day, all these mediums are highly addictive. You even see how like it works on the brain and things like that. That's true. And so all these things have created like atmospheres in which. People are more disconnected from their neighbors and they spend more of their time online. And even the spending time online is just not good for people's health, generally speaking. How do you manage it? I just bounce it by having like real life activities and real life interactions. And so I, I'd never sacrifice one for the other. So that's how I do. But do you do so that? So when, you- when I have too much online stuff, I feel worse. Ah, uh, okay. Absolutely. Do you so know that because you've read studies or do you know that because you've been introspective about yourself? Like, hey, Abba, how are we feeling today? I've just been through different periods and I've just seen my mood shift. And then I've also just paid attention to how I'm feeling based off what I'm doing or not doing. And so for me, it's been able to scale things back based off like all right, what gives me the best outcome. What to you is the best outcome? What are you looking for? Joy, contentment, happiness? Yeah, I just want to leave that's peaceful. If my life's mm. peaceful, it's good. That's a good word, peaceful. Yeah. Is Are you the most at peace when you're kind of like so alone doing your own thing? Or do you feel like you're most at peace when you're surrounded by people you love? Mm, well, I have a balance. That's probably the best answer. Mm-hmm. No, nothing, too much of one or the other. It's a balance. Do you think you're good with boundaries? Yeah. 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 I'm going to say that's a big part of it. So discipline, boundaries, knowing yourself enough to know like how to keep that balance. Yes. Okay. I will concede then. That I think society is without balance. Yeah. And that is the major contributing factor to people. And I am obsessed with balance. (laughs) You know, so maybe that's it. What do you mean? Well, I feel like balance and discipline keep me sane, happy, um, ability to consent, to maintain work, to do everything I need to do. Like, even if my mom calls me, I go, I love you, mom. I need to go. I need to take like 10 minutes to myself. Or like even my own sister. She's like, I love you. I got to go. Like, we're very big on communicating those because we didn't have them growing up. It was the kind of family that my mom did not knock. She just opened. She went through my drawers, read my journals, went through my look for anything I was keeping in the house. Like my parents did not believe in privacy. And I think as children, we demanded it out of my parents. Because I even tell my mom now, you want to see me? You got to accept that like, this is what's happening. If you're at my house, this is how the vibe is. And when I come to your house, I'll dress better. Like I could never dress like this in front of my parents. They would be outraged. (laughs) Right? So maybe that's it. Maybe it's the lack of balance then. Yeah. I mean, I'm inclined to agree. I think, be it like, you look at people's diets, you look at people's way of living in terms of exercise, you look at people's friendships and time they spend online, you probably find an imbalance in all those things. So, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. I think we just solved it. Partially. Partially, I think we just disagree on, like, whether or not it's a matter of just personal choice or whether or not it's social engineering. And I think a lot of it's social engineering, and so that's why I spend my time talking about you want to focus more on the personal agency, which is fine. I just don't think it's a tenable situation for society at large. And so I think if you just make things easier for people, that people are much likely to choose better outcomes. That's why people are fat in America, but not nearly as fat everywhere else. It's because socially engineering is really, really important. So, so uh, you're right. So like, if I looked at the balance that we need to have in this conversation or in my mindset, I would say, okay, fine. Let's say it's like half engineering, half what you're doing as an individual. I do, I do though, I think it's more like 60, 40. Like what you do as an individual within the circumstance of your bubble. More than the bubble telling, like influencing you more. I disagree. Okay, so that's where we're having. So, our- so, so, do you think when people are skinnier in other countries, it's all just personal choice? They just uh, they're mo- much more determined than Americans. No, we put a lot of preservatives and um, bad stuff in our food. I know so, that. So, so what's the percentages of like personal choice versus societal engineering? Is makes America substantially more fat? I'm asking. What, 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 what do you think is, is it? Do you think Americans are just fucking lazier? Like, why? why well, are they- okay, fine. Okay, I will say with this, we grew up with home cooked meals my whole life. Like, we were too poor to afford fast food. So when people say, oh, like, I'm poor, so that's why we eat McDonald's, I'm just thinking, like, we couldn't even afford McDonald's growing up because we were so poor. Like, we weren't even that poor. Like, we were poor, but like, too poor to afford McDonald's for 10 kids. Sure. My brothers could eat like 10 of those, like, burgers, right? So, like, my parents had to cook. We ate a lot of Middle Eastern food, rice with some beef and beans. Like, that's Middle Eastern food right there, right, babe? Mm -hmm. So, like, 
I think a big part of it is that like my parents were really big on like keeping their kids in shape. We have an obesity pandemic or issue in my dad's side of the family, like diabetes, legs amputated because of like overeating, like huge issues. Because when they came to America, they just got into those bubbles with other Americans who were getting very morbidly obese. So did your parents, was it the social engineering or was it the fact that they just make poor choices all their fault? Both. Both? Yeah. Yeah. They really they owned a pizza shop and they owned like how, they lived how, in how a, many how many fat super supremely obese people are there in Iraq? So why is it that so what why are people making so much better choices in Iraq? They're not all poor. Yeah. You understand? Like I think the whole personal accountability thing is fine as an individual watching. Like if I'm watching a video, I want to just think about what can I do for myself. And I'm mm-hmm. fine. Like if you want to have that conversation, like, hey, if you're watching right now, go sign up, take a class, go meet some friends, go make take some hobbies that are social. Yeah. We can easily say that stuff. That's fine. And that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. But if we're talking about an issue that is societal, I just I think focusing on the individual choices um, whilst comforting for the viewer and mm-hmm. very easy to internalize. I think society can just work itself to make those choices more accessible. It's like if you're raising a child and they never have access to bad foods, you don't have to train them yeah, to yeah, learn yeah, yeah. not to eat bad foods. If they're always drinking water and they're having delicious fruits, like they're going to grow addicted and love that. They're going to grow older and they're going to have a head start in front of everybody. You know what I mean? like, it's so true. My nephews, my they hadn't given them candy. Yeah. And then Halloween came up and the old man was like, here you go. And my nephews were like, what is it? And they're yeah. like, it's candy. Do you want it? And they're like, can you have like blueberries or like strawberries? Yeah. And I was like, bro. That's a rare, but that's that's engineering. That's yeah. your your community's engineer itself to give them that opportunity, right? That's- well, maybe I think I do think society is a reflection of the people. So I trust the people to move society forward. And so I blame society is blaming the individual. Yeah, no, no. That's not how it works. Because because of systems? On a micro scale, like on a micro community, like if you're a community of 100 people, then maybe you can make that argument. Okay. When you're talking about 100, 200,000 corporate interests, mm-hmm. foreigners being involved, all kinds of things, it's very hard to say it's a reflection of the people inherently. Uh, sometimes it can be just a reflection of a few people and their choices. Sometimes a reflection of like, you know, uh, marketing campaigns and all kinds of other stuff to sway public opinion. There's a lot of things that can happen in order to sway public consciousness. So it's not just so much as a reflection of individual choices always. Maybe my problem is that when I used to hear community or even like, um, I just think of like the community you're actually interacting with, kind of like I think inner circle, outer circle, like society. So when people say society, that's way too big of a problem to tackle. So my brain goes, we can't do that. So it's already a failure. Let's focus in on small neighborhoods or communities. Like Seattle was a really cool concept when it was built. They had this idea that Seattle was going to be like your town had one post office, like everything you needed, a church, a school, everything. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to commute out of your town. Jobs were there, but then that didn't happen. Amazon came in, people had to commute. Now people are commuting three hours into Seattle. Their kids aren't, you know, like people don't have time with their families anymore because now I understand this happens. So you're right. Maybe my brain just moves to smaller scale because I know it's a lost cause to go larger. I I think it is. Yeah. I I think it's too big to imagine the scope and change needed. Mm. I don't think it's a lost cause. I think those are places where regulations and things come into place to kind of protect us. And I think that's where the government voting and all that stuff that people talk about will probably, mm-hmm. it's probably more efficient. Do you um, participate in Canadian politics? No, not at all. The fuck? No. Why not? It just doesn't interest me. Okay, so you have this desire for societal change, but not really? No, I think it's necessary. I just don't get myself involved. Yeah, if you're, not, you're asking me about the solutions on a macro scale. Now you're asking me about, like, do I get involved on a micro scale? And I yeah. said no. Hmm. Yeah. But that's the problem, right? That's why I think there's no macro solution because no one's going to want to do it. No, there's definitely people who want to do it. And there's people who are working towards it. It's just not me. Are you going to join? Are you going to participate? Are no. you just... No. Abba! That's what I'm saying. We're saying the same fucking thing. No. We are so saying the same thing. Yes, it's just, yes, yes, the system could help, but it's not going to help. So the individuals have to do it. No, we're not saying the same thing. You're saying the system's not going to help. I think it can. And I think there's people who are going to make it happen. It's just not going to be me. <laughs> I don't know why you think You are a reflection of the society. You are society. We are society. No, I don't think so. The fuck? I disagree. Now you're... Ch- I disagree. I think, I think me as an individual can exist in a country with far less obesity. And the system can still work well. It's not because it's a reflection of me when I'm living in Italy that people are less fat over there or whatever. It's just because of the fact that the system is just well-functioning and there's probably people who help maintain it. It just happens it's not me as an individual. Now, if plenty of people adopt my mindset or whatever, then maybe. 
But um, yeah, I don't think so. It's interesting when I look at these like Nordic countries everyone's obsessed with in America. They're like, oh, we should be like Sweden and Switzerland. And we should be like all these European countries that have figured it out. They're all small fucking countries. Three million, four million, two million. Like they're small ass countries. Like, and so I'm thinking, well, maybe that's it. Maybe it's like small scale solution. But again, we live in a, I live in a 350 million person country. Mm -hmm. So we can't do it that way. San Francisco is not like Texas. So I'm saying maybe Texans should have their own method and San Francisco should has it, have its own method or all of California. Well, California is different too, girls. Southern California, motorcycles and motocross. Northern California, gay guys and thongs. You know, it's very different. Yeah. So like even that's diverse and different. Maybe. Maybe, maybe every state should have its own solution. Maybe. I just feel like people vibe differently. Like even what we're eating isn't the same. Like I grew up in Cali and I grew up kind of around like kind of snobby people about like what you fed your kids. Um, like, you know, if you, you kind of didn't get frozen PB and J's, right? Let's like, don't do that. Don't even get white bread. Cause it's so f- crap for you. You know, get whole wheat with grains and shit. Yeah. And that's expensive. So like, I understand like what we're asking of society is mm-hmm. to, shh. Oh, that was a weird sound. I think it was a truck. Well, anyways, I think we're saying the same thing, but in different ways. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. I don't. You, I you're vehemently t- disagree. You're like taking an individual approach, but the societal, the, the, the big issue on the macro isn't going to get solved. And you, like, I feel like you're saying that. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. <sighs> what does it look like? What does what look like? It being solved. It being solved, meaning loneliness, or what are we talking about? Society, yeah, loneliness and society. Mm, I think it just results in probably lower suicide rates. Probably results in people's better self-esteem, a higher, you know, workforce, f- better feeling workforce, better contributing people in society in general. I think people who feel fulfilled and feel well, just more productive um, and happier, more content. So that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard about those studies where religious people are happier and they live better lives than sure. atheists and seculars? Sure. Yeah. They need consistency, community, and structure. Okay, so we know the tenets of religion and the positive like parts they play in society, right? Mm-hmm. In order to implement that, you would have to have like a lack of diversity, because cohesiveness doesn't usually coincide with diversity, right? Sure. The fuck is that? Someone at our door. Should we get it? Yeah, we should. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I was gonna make the point. That maybe diversity and the um, is causing a lot of the issues. Yeah. Because in so many ways, like diversity, like doesn't allow cohesiveness. Sure. So what do you think about that idea of like it does need small communities? We should go back to that, and maybe that's the societal answer. Um, I don't think we need small communities. Like we need to fracture everything. I think, um, I think there are ways in which things can be more localized. And that requires people to be incentivized to remain local. What that means is when you encourage the ability for local businesses to thrive rather than like big monopolies like McDonald's or fast food industries or Walmarts, you change the cohesiveness and the feeling of a city or a place. Totally. I think when you socially engineer your society to be more efficient for public transport, biking, things like that, you engineer people to be around each other more. Um, I think when you create an economic situation in which people have like the financial flexibility to take on more social activities and have more leisure time to invest and be with their friends and family you engineer a society in which people are much more likely to have good outcomes and so overall i understand what you're saying in regards to like religion and there's nothing wrong with that because i think that's one form of community that's like really good i just think if you give people options and you give them um some that's functional then i think they're much better off as a result so we do agree. I still don't think we agree. I think we agree. We're yeah. talking about how to make society better by humanizing everyone, by no. being... Oh, okay. Because you were saying personal choice. Well, no, 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 no. Well, also, yes, in, in conjunction with the balance of being aware of societal pressures and influence, these big companies, you're right, do come in, ruin mom and pop shops, and then all of a sudden we're not... Like, I was going to go to the dentist here. Um, I'm going to end up going to the dentist where my partner lives. But we're going to lo- support the local economy, right? The idea is, like, let's support our local economy. Let me go to my local dentist who doesn't have a big, like, money-making machine behind him. It's not no chain. It's a individually owned dentist. So I make this effort to pick my places based off of this, right? Sure. 
So I understand that like when Amazon comes in or McDonald's is there and it's what is accessible, people will choose it. But I'm saying people choose it. No. I'm saying you engineer it so that people choose it. That's the difference. Okay. You're saying choose it. I'm saying engineer it so it's the best choice. And I don't think accessible. it goes top to bottom. I think it goes bottom to top. I think it goes top to bottom. All the time, every time? The vast majority of the time. Yeah. It's like you can make healthy options more accessible or you can just get rid of bad options. But these companies would Yeah, do you, you hear what I was just saying? You can make good options more accessible or you can just get rid of the bad options. Make good options more accessible. Or you just get rid of the bad options. But what is bad option? Why not? Because you still want the freedom to be bad. I think that this is where I was going with the thing. If I think it has really bad outcomes for society, I don't think you should allow all those bad options to fester. That's why I say get rid of gambling, get rid of voting. You know what I'm saying? Not <laughs> voting, uh, smoking. Oh, I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get rid of smoking and you know, cigarette. Uh, I think it's cigarettes. But look, I understand people's like, I think it's. Also, not the most American take. Americans want their freedoms to be able to do the most unhealthy stuff, which is fine. I think that's the ethos of your country. You should live by that. You should be able to live that. If you're asking me what I think is ideal for society, I think it's perfectly acceptable to say, get rid of smoking because it's just bad. You know, like, if it's like some good and some bad, then we can have that argument. You know what I mean? Sugar, you're going to have a hard time telling me that refined sugars are good for society. You're going to have a hard time. Mm. I can't have that anymore because my lupus people. You You're going to have that? a hard time. The, the out, health outcomes, tremendously bad. I mean, you can make a great case for it to be gone. Damn. Okay, this is where we significantly disagree. I do think people yeah. should have the right to be so bad. I told you we don't agree. And abuse their bodies. Fine. Then I, I, then this is where we disagree. I do radically believe in like freedom See? and so on. USA. USA. In the end, I was right. Cause like whoa, I said, whoa, whoa. I, like I said, <laughs> we don't agree. Fine, fine, fine. You are right. We don't agree. Yeah. Which Damn. is fine, too. I don't yeah. mind that at all. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. So this is it. This is why there can't be a solution. Because ABBA and I both exist in the same universe. Yeah. Or we just live in fundamentally different countries where there's a fundamentally different ethos. And you're thinking individuals need to make better choices, which is fine. But you're also living in a society which encourages a tremendous amount of freedom. Well, there's going to be a lot of exploitation mm. in that. There's going to be a lot of bad social engineering in that because from my freedoms... And you're going to have fat people. You're going to have a healthcare system that doesn't work. You're going to have a bunch of socialized programs that are pretty much non-existent. Are we running out of memory? What's going on here? Why is it blinking on me? Uh, yeah, you got about six minutes left. I mean, I think we're pretty much at the end yeah, of Yeah, I guess we're at the end of it. So, yeah. So, you agree with me. You need a cohesive society and an agreed ethos to make it work. And freedom brings chaos. So yeah, I, mean, I think you just need like a very general, like, all right, we want to encourage freedom as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's size working. It's giving you all the freedoms you guys want. Just turns out when you don't organize it very well, those freedoms can be very detrimental. And so you need the basis. It's fine. It's still recording. Okay. You know, so I don't know. To me, I just think, um, yeah, I just don't think it's efficient. So you're right, Liz. We have a different idea of what we want for a country. We don't live in the same country. So you're good. right. I want freedom, so I want chaos. Ugh, I'm, I'm and, kind of a And there you go. You got, you got diabetes everywhere, and uh, you got lonely people. And drugs and lonely people. Oh, yeah, I do like the chaos. Okay, damn. Okay, well, we might disagree, but I think it was a balanced conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Cheers. Did the camera move? Yeah, I moved it. Oh, god damn. I thought, I thought you were going to get robbed, so I went to go grab a knife. What? Robbed in this neighborhood? I don't think so. I mean, hey, maybe. listen, listen. Somebody knocks the door, you open it. I don't play no games. Sweet old people. I don't give a fuck. I, don't <laughs> no I thought you were robbed. I literally went to the kitchen and grabbed knives. I was like, listen, I ain't going out like no bitch. That's, that's how my brain works. You just that's open the door, like, hey, what's going on? They're like, so are you an Airbnb? I'm like, girl, if you tell them, yeah, I'm, I'm an Airbnb. I'm like, this girl's so goddamn fucking country. <laughs> like. I didn't Fuck, my, my partner tells me this all the time. He's like, you just fucking volunteer when you're home alone way too often. Yeah, that's why I made sure I showed up so you knew you weren't by yourself so you wouldn't try nothing stupid. Like, okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> let's carry on. Thank you for being such a man. I, I was going to kill somebody. I swear to <laughs> God, I don't even care. All right, let's go. Stuck in my head In real life while in bed My belly's being fed And I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of
thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 